This video is all about, should I buy a cheap electric car or a cheap diesel or petrol car? There's obviously lots going on in the press at the moment about electric cars being the future, but actually are they? Let's get into it. So I've got a load of experience in car buying. I had 17 years in the motor trade, eight years as a used car buyer. I used to buy a thousand cars a year. And um, I've got some really strong experience with EVs. So I thought I was really well placed to try and help people make a good decision on what car to buy. So I've got a spreadsheet in front of me because apparently uh, the children's whiteboard wasn't professional enough. So I've got a spreadsheet in front of me and it's just nice and clear, nice and simple to help show you where you could save money. So what I've got at the top is EV and ICE and then the difference between the two. And then down the left hand side in blue, I've got brand, model, age, miles, cost, yearly tax, yearly insurance, pence per mile, the range, service, cost of service that is, cost of brakes, other maintenance, the safety, which is important to a lot of people, and the specifications, so things like rear camera, sensors, Bluetooth, that sort of thing. And at the bottom you've got totals, but don't look at the totals just yet because there is quite a lot to kind of just explain first, which is really, really important. So as you might be able to notice, we've got two different cars here. So these are the cheapest cars I could find on Auto Trader, And both these cars had more than three months MOT and none of them had lights on the dash. They're both similar size. So I went for the cheapest EV, which most people know is a Nissan Leaf. And then you've got the cheapest petrol diesel car I could find. In this case, it was a diesel. It was a Skoda Octavia 1.9 diesel automatic hatchback. Now, first thing you'll notice as you come down from brand model to age, is there's seven years difference here. So it's quite a big difference in age of vehicles, which, you know, there is a big price difference, but let's go into that a bit more. Mileage, 43,000 miles on the electric car versus 133,000 miles on the diesel car. Now cost, now electric cars, you can get cheaper than this, but this was the best I could find on electric. And what made this electric car really, really good, and what a lot of people don't understand or know about Nissan Leafs is they have number of battery bars. So people hear about battery degradation. That's basically um, the range, because Nissan Leafs have got the, haven't got the water-cooled or air-cooled batteries they they're just they're not cooled in any way so they do suffer from battery degradation which means that the range decreases quite swiftly this particular one i found had 11 bars of battery out of 12 so it was a really strong battery still so that will still do around 70 miles but that again that's that's why i picked that particular one so 2400 quid uh, on the ev versus 950 so basically a grand for the diesel next cost and we'll total these up at the end we've got the yearly tax so the yearly tax on the leaf free easy on the diesel auto 240 pounds insurance i was really impressed with this so this is based on the car being at my house but on the street uh, because this scenario that i'm doing all the costings on is based on no home charging and i'll come to the detail on that in a minute so yearly insurance cost as you can see hardly any difference the uh, electric cars like 19 pounds more a year not really worth talking about and that was like 850 in total excess so quite a big excess pretty much the same price as the uh, scott scott octavia here so pence per mile so this information was taken from uh, plug seeker who did a recent uh, information gathering on the rough cost of running uh, diesel and petrol and then I've got the cost of running an EV. So where this all comes from is the cost I've got here um, to run a diesel car or a petrol car, it works out to be roughly about 13p. Now I've added a couple more pence on the diesel because it's a, quite an old diesel, quite old technology. So I'm being really nice to the diesel here and saying that it's 15 pence per mile. The electric car, now in this scenario, I've based it on my cheapest charger, most locally to me, which is 56p per kilowatt hour. That's a lot of money. Um, I actually personally uh, have an electric car and it costs me 9p per kilowatt hour because I've got my own charger and I do a night rate, which makes it cheaper. Normal electric rate you'll be paying during the day is around about 28 pence. But in this scenario, 
56p. So based on 10,000 miles a year, that's what I've based it on, the diesel car will cost you 1,500 pounds, because it's 15 pence per mile, and the EV will cost 18 pence per mile. So we've taken that 56p and we've divided it by three, because each kilowatt hour gives you three miles, three miles per kilowatt in uh, Nissan Leaf. That's a very rough average, but it's a good average. I've not been too kind to the EV, and it's probably an average over winter and summer. If people are gonna you know, start throwing the, in winter they've got a short range, of course they have, yes they have, because batteries don't perform as well in the winter uh, versus the summer. So range, obviously the Skoda is gonna be 300 miles plus, but although I drive nationwide, I do a lot of miles, but most people don't actually do more than 20, 30, 40 miles in a round trip a day. So in this case, we're at 70 miles range on the Nissan Leaf, it would actually be fine for most people. Not all, but most. Servicing costs. So servicing costs on the Skoda Octavia, and this also includes MOT. Skoda is 200 quid to do a yearly service on a uh, Octavia, including MOT. The EV, now I didn't put a service cost on the EV. I'll just put an MOT, because really an EV just needs a check round. Yes, okay, it might need things over time, but to be honest, if you want to keep it cheap, you want to keep a car running, that's what you're talking. Um, brakes, now I worked out the cost of discs and pads on a Octavia diesel automatic, and over four years, it worked out to be 50 pounds, because it was 200 quid, pretty much fitted for discs and pads, so I thought, divide that by four years, because you only really need this and pads every four years, and that's where I got 50 quid from. The 17 pound for the Nissan Leaf is because the stats out there say that an electric car need brakes a third less than petrol diesel cars, and that's the information out there. And I can believe that, because my Tesla's done 100,000 miles, and I don't think it's even had this or pads yet, because they just don't use them because of the regenerative braking that happens on electric cars. So a lot of electric cars, you take your foot off the brake, uh, sorry, accelerator, and it starts to brake for you. But that's the motor braking, putting electricity back into the uh, battery. So other maintenance, cam belt, gearbox service, you know, belts, other things. I, I, again, I've been quite kind to the diesel car because bear in mind, it's done 133,000 miles to 2007. It's likely to a, for a lot to go wrong on this car. But I put 150 quid there uh, based on cam belt change after five years and gearbox oil, etc. And again, I've put a third of the cost on that on the EV. Again, to be fair, might not even need that. Um, but there we go. That's that's what I've kind of estimated with that. Safety rating. The Skoda is a four star NCAP rating and the Nissan Leaf is a five star. In terms of specification, being a 2007, the Skoda Octavia clearly hasn't got much spec at all. It's got alloy wheels, nice. Um, is to put the uh, Nissan Leaf, that's got rear camera, navigation, Bluetooth, phone connection. So at the bottom here, we've got totals. And so that's the, after a year and purchasing the vehicle, the EV has cost you £4,745. So that's your insurance and all the things I've just gone through, which includes your fuel. And then the diesel comes out to be cheaper. That comes out to be £3,500. That's on the basis that neither car have needed more work on them, I haven't included tires, bear in mind, it's gonna be roughly the same cost on both of them, um, but I haven't included tires on that, and you know who knows what could go wrong on the electric car, and probably more likely the diesel car because of the high mileage and it's seven years older. So there is a saving of course for the diesel based on those figures, and that works out to be 1,250 pounds. The second year, it works out that there's a thousand pound difference. And the year after that, it works out to be, again, less of a difference. So as you can tell, an electric car will start saving you money over time on this scenario, because the service and maintenance costs and the tax are cheaper. Insurance is the same. To buy the car in the first place is more expensive. That's why it's a big gap to start with and it starts to reduce. So what can make an electric car more, more affordable. As I intimated earlier, I pay three pence per kilowatt hour, sorry, uh, nine pence per kilowatt hour overnight. Now, if you've got your own charger at home or you can find a cheaper charger 
Now, if I go further away, I can find a charger which is not 56p, but 44p, which brings the um, yearly cost right down. Now, if you can have an overnight charger, same as uh, what I've got, yes, you have to pay for a charger to be fitted, and that's gonna cost, worst case scenario, about a thousand pounds. So let's put that into the figures and give you the night rate and see what differences that makes. So 300 pounds there. So straight away, you see the difference. It makes a hell of a difference. If you add a thousand pounds, so 3,245 plus a thousand would be four, two, four, five. The next year would be 5,090. So as you can see, the first year, okay, it is more expensive. But the second year, you're already saving a thousand pounds. And then the third year, wow, you're saving 1,600 pounds. Bear in mind after the second and the third year, you've now got a older diesel auto, which has done 140, then 150,000 miles. And then the car is that much older again. So it's more likely that the diesel car will need more work done on it. There are more moving parts on an ICE internal combustion engine vehicle. So there is a lot more to go wrong. Electric car, what are the negatives with that? So as I mentioned earlier, battery degradation. So battery degradation tends to happen most when a battery gets hot, especially on the Nissan Leaf. Because as I mentioned before, the batteries cannot be cooled down because there isn't any thermal management, is what they call it. So it's basically um, a way of cooling the batteries down. Now, that gives you an idea that actually, yes, if you can have cheaper charging, then it will definitely work out cheaper. So have you got a driveway? If you haven't got a driveway, more than likely, it's gonna take quite a long time to make the savings. However, it might be a lot more reliable. So it all depends on your scenario, but hopefully these figures have been useful. I'm gonna do another video soon, which will be based on a better electric car, and I'm gonna compare that to a similar age and mileage car, just to show you the differences between electric and petrol or diesel in a slightly different way. If you've got any other questions or any comments about what other things people want me to show them, I'll be more than happy to help. Thanks for watching.